Let's talk about measuring with the new i1 Pro 3 and the Pro 3 Plus. Let's widen the app to make it bigger. Look at all the instruments we support these days. I always like to point out to people that our measurement tool can use target references from different manufacturers, even companies different from the instrument that you're using. These RWXF files are from XWrite for the ISIS or i1 Pro. And then Barbie puts out a zip file as a reference for an LFP or something. The CGATS text file. But you can use any of those to measure using the i1 Pro 3. We'll start with a 54 patch control strip and an i1 Pro 3. So follow the screen prompts for selecting an instrument, a target, and a calibration. Open up the white calibration tile on the sled. You can start your scan from one side or the other and scan in either direction. Hold in the button on the side and then slide across, letting go of the button once you end at the other side. The i1 Pro 3 and the Plus will scan in any mode with just one pass. You get an audible start and ending sound. The ending sound is not quite as happy sounding if the scan was not successful. Once the page is finished, click the Save button to continue, or just click the button on the side of the i1 again as a quick way to save and exit. Now let's switch to the i1 Pro 3 Plus. The bottom of the screen lists the measurement parameters that are available to you. You can measure using M0, M1, M2, as you would expect. If you have an i1 Pro 3 Plus, it allows you to switch to a polarizing filter to do M3 measurements. So let's do that. The filter area detaches and you can switch to the polarized version. A lot of these options are grayed out if they're not applicable to your instrument. You have the option of measuring in strip mode or measuring a single spot. You could even measure the whole target one spot measurement at a time if you really wanted to. And then your aperture size on the i1 Pro 3 is permanently set at 8 millimeters for the i1 Pro 3 Plus and 4.5 millimeters for the i1 Pro 3. But let's talk about these rotate buttons. We have the ability to rotate the target in the preview to match the way you want to measure. After you finish the measurement, the measurement file will be outputted in its original formatting. So this just makes it very handy to measure targets that are laid out differently in the reference file than the way you want to measure. For example, say you could have a, a vertical P2P target and a target reference, but you know it would measure more quickly if you could measure it horizontally. And this will allow you to do that. We'll do something similar with this 54 patch target. Notice it will connect to the original i1 Pro or the i1 Pro 2 or the Pro 3 or the Pro 3 Plus all under this category of i1 Pro. If you're having trouble getting it to connect to your i1 Pro 3, check to see what version of software you're using. Curve 4 requires version 4.4 or later, and the Maxwell client supports them as of version 5.7. And all versions of ColorThink 4 will support the i1 Pro 3 and Plus for basic reflective measurements. One more important feature, everyone has their own way of measuring. One good practice is to arrange the ruler so that it's not laying on top of the patches that you have not measured yet. So you set it so that it never touches and possibly mars the patches before you've had a chance to measure them. Good idea. What you don't want to do is flip the ruler around like this so that the i1 Pro is measuring upside down. The position of the ruler and the instrument just messes things up and the row comes out in the opposite order than it should be. If you want to measure this way, click this arrow button on the right to flip the direction of the measurement. And then measure the rows from the bottom up. The final measurement exported from the measurement tool will still have the normal ordering of patches like it's supposed to have. Thanks for watching. Contact Chromix Tech Support for any questions.